good morning to one and all so in this session i am going to explain about classification of bearings in uh, in previous class we have discussed about uh, bearing materials and and material properties okay in this session i will explain about classification of bearings Uh, already we know that what is the function of a bearing a bearing is a mission element which supports another moving mission element it permits a relative motion between the contact surfaces of the members while carrying the load okay so this is a this is a shaft or journal this is a moving element okay now this is a bearing okay this is a bearing and uh, it is a it is a fixed element okay it is not moving okay this is the assembled view of a shaft and bearing now before going to the classification of bearings first you have to know the, the first of all you have to know about uh, loads types of loads acting on bearings okay yeah uh, yeah there are three types of loads acting on bearings first one is uh, radial load second one is axial load or thrust loads and third one is combined load okay now coming to the radial loads if the load acts perpendicular to the direction of motion of the moving element is known as radial load okay here they are the load acts perpendicular to the direction of motion okay i will explain with example this is a shaft this is the isometric view here i am showing a, a orthographic view that is a front view i am showing the front view of a bearing this is a shaft okay this is the axis axis of the shaft now this is the bearing okay this is a bearing here the load is acting on the bearing this is the load Okay, this is the radial load here the angle between the radial load and the axis axis of the shaft is 90 degrees okay now in this case uh, the direction of uh, load is perpendicular to the direction of motion of the moving element okay it makes 90 angle 90 degrees angle between the axis and the load so this call this load is called radial load okay now here in this case the main load is perpendicular to the axis of the rotation axis of rotation of the moving element so here the majority of the load is radial load that radial load acts perpendicular to the axis of rotation of the shaft okay this is radial load and coming to the axial load axial load also known as uh, thrust loads okay here if the load acts along the direction of the motion along the direction of motion of the moving element is known as axial load or thrust load okay here the load is acting along the along the direction of the motion so here the main load is parallel to the axis of rotation of the moving element. I will explain with example. Already, already we know that shaft, this is the axis, axis of the shaft, this is the bearing. And here the load is applying, the load is applying parallel to the axis parallel to the axis of the 
rotation of the shaft. Okay, here the load is parallel to the axis of the shaft. Okay, that is zero angle, zero angle between the axis and load. Okay, here the load is parallel to the axis, axis of the shaft. So the majority of the load is acting parallel to the axis of along the axis of the shaft. So that type of load is called axial load, axial load or thrust load. Now coming to the last one that is a combined loads. If the load acts perpendicular, perpendicular and parallel, uh, perpendicular and parallel to the direction of motion of the moving element is known as combined load. So in this case, uh, perpendicular loads and parallel loads are comes under this uh, condition. So perpendicular loads are called radial loads, parallel loads are called axial loads. Okay, shaft, axis, okay, bearing, yeah. Here, one type of load is perpendicular load, that is a radial load, and another type of load is, yeah, the angle is 90 degrees, and another type of load is axial load, okay. So here, both loads are acting together, okay. If uh, radial loads and axial loads acts on the bearing, then the type of load is called combined load. Now coming to the, the topic that is a classification of bearings. It is very important for exam point of view and the subject point of view also. Classification of bearings. Yeah, the following are the important types of bearings from subject point of view. Bearings are classified uh, depending upon the direction of load. Depending upon the direction of load, that is uh, uh, load acting on the bearing. Okay, depending upon the direction of load acting on the bearing. And second one is uh, depending upon the nature of contact. Okay, bearings are classified on, on basis of contact. And third one is depending upon the type of lubrication. Okay, bearings classified under lubrication. And last one is depending upon the size and space, availability of the size and space. Okay. First one is depending upon the direction of load to be supported. So uh, the bearings under this group are classified as radial bearings and thrust bearings okay depending upon the direction of load to be supported in this group bearings are classified as radial bearings and thrust bearings okay in previous slide already we have discussed about uh, radial loads and thrust loads okay so in radial bearings the major the major load is uh, is radial load okay that load is uh, perpendicular to the direction of motion of the moving element okay this is the example for radial loads this is uh, this is also example for radial loads okay radial loads and radial bearings in radial bearings the majority of the load is radial load okay here the load is acting perpendicular to the axis of the shaft okay and another type is thrust bearings. Thrust bearings are axial bearings. In thrust bearings, the load acts along the axis of the rotation as shown in this figure. So here, the load is acting along the axis of the shaft. Okay, here the majority of the load is axial load. Axial load or thrust load. So this type of bearings are called thrust bearings. Okay, this is the front view, this is the side view. Okay, this is the front view, this is side view. Okay. Now, another type is uh, depending upon the nature of contact. Depending upon the nature of contact, uh, 
uh, the bearings uh, under this group are classified as sliding contact bearings and rolling contact bearings okay first type is sliding contact bearings in this in sliding contact bearings sliding action is takes place in rolling contact bearings the rolling action is takes place between the shaft and bearing okay i will explain with the example here this is the example for sliding contact bearing okay this is also example for sliding contact bearing in sliding contact bearings uh, the sliding action takes place along the surface of the contact between the moving element and the fixed element okay here here in this case this one is bearing this bearing is fixed element this shaft is sliding element sliding or moving element okay here here also this shaft is moving element this bearing is fixed element okay here sliding action is takes place here the sliding action is takes place between the shaft and bearing here rotation as well as uh, sliding action will takes place okay in sliding contact bearings uh, we are using lubrication for smooth running of uh, rotation and uh, rolling contact bearings so here in rolling contact bearings uh, the steel balls steel balls or rollers are interposed between the moving and fixed elements so the balls of a rolling friction at two points for each ball or roller okay in rolling contact bearings we are using balls and rollers this is the example of our ball bearing here this is a sectional view sectional view of a ball bearing here this outer uh, surface is called outer race this outer this is this outer surface is called outer race and the this inner surface is called inner race and uh, these are called these balls are called uh, rolling elements rolling elements these balls are called rolling elements for separating each ball we are using retainer this is called retainer okay so here these are the balls these balls are using in this ball bearing okay ball bearing is the example for rolling contact bearings okay this is the another example that is a rolling bearings these are called rolling bearings roller bearings here, here also rolling uh, rolling action is takes place here we are using a rollers instead of balls for uh, maintaining high capacity loads here also this is a uh, outer race outer race of this uh, roller bearing this is the inner race of the bearing this is called this is uh, these rollers are called rolling elements okay and this one is called retainer okay retainer this is a single row single row roller bearings okay here one row here cylinders are arranged in a single row this is the example for double row double row roller bearings in these bearings we are using two rows okay here also this is outer race this is inner race this is a retainer retainer and these are called rolling elements okay here rollers are using now third type is uh, depending upon the type of lubrication okay uh, under this group uh, bearings are classified as thick film or hydrodynamic bearings thin film bearings zero film bearings and fourth one is hydrostatic 
or externally pressurized lubricated bearings. I will explain one by one. Thick film or hydrodynamic bearings. Okay. Any doubts, please ask me. Any doubts? Please ask me. Hello? No doubt? Okay, I will continue. Okay, coming to the, depending upon the type of lubrication, here bearings are classified under the, under the action of lubrication. Here we are, uh, we are classified this as thick film or hydrodynamic bearings, thin film bearings, zero film bearings hydrostatic or externally pressurized lubricated bearings. Now coming to the thick film or a hydrodynamic bearings. So in thick film bearings, uh, thick film bearings are those in which the working surfaces are completely separated by, completely separated by the lubricant. Okay. So here we are using a lubricant. Okay, such type of bearings are also called as hydrodynamic lubricated bearings. Here, in thick film lubrication, in thick film or hydrodynamic bearings, we are using a lubrication in a thick layer. Okay, the thick film bearings are those in which the working surfaces are completely separated by the lubricant. Okay, here we are using high amount of lubricant for a smooth running or running of the shaft. Now coming to the second type that is a thin film bearings. The thin film bearings are those in which although lubricant is present, the working surfaces partially, partially contact, partially contact each other at least part of the time. Such type of bearings are also called boundary lubricated bearings. Okay, here, uh, here also we are using lubrication or lubricants, but here we are using less less amount of lubrication. Okay, here for these bearings are these uh, type of bearings. These uh, thin film bearings are using at uh, low speeds and low weights as well as thick film bearings or hydrodynamic bearings are using at uh, at high capacity loads high loads and high speed engines now coming to the third type that is a zero film bearings the zero film bearings are those which is operated without any lubricant present Okay, in zero film bearings, we are not using any type of lubricant. Okay, there is no presence of lubricant between the bearing and shaft. Okay. Now coming to the last type, that is a hydrostatic or externally pressurized lubricated bearings. Uh, hydrostatic bearings are those which can support steady loads without any relative motion between the journal and bearing. This is achieved by forcing actionally pressurized lubricant between the members. Okay. In hydrostatic bearings, we are using a continuous lubrication. Okay. Here yeah, for uh, here we are maintaining high 
high pressure okay we are pumping high pressurized lubricant by using externally pressurized pumps okay these type of bearings are used at uh, high high amount ఇవి ఎక్కడ ఏం చేస్తాం అంటే ఎక్కడైతే బేరింగ్ అండ్ షాఫ్ట్ వాటి యొక్క షాఫ్ట్ యొక్క సైజ్ అనేది ఎక్కడైతే హెవీగా ఉంటుందో అండ్ షాఫ్ట్ యొక్క బరువు అనేది ఎక్కువగా ఉంటుందో అక్కడ ఆ బరువుని మోయటానికి ఈ హైడ్రో స్టాటిక్ బేరింగ్స్ అనేవి యూజ్ చేస్తాం ఓకే నా ఫోర్త్ టైప్ ఈజ్ డిపెండింగ్ అపాన్ ది సైజ్ సైజ్ అండ్ స్పేస్ సో బేరింగ్స్ క్లాసిఫైడ్ అండర్ దిస్ గ్రూప్ ఆర్ short bearing long bearing and square bearings here the bearings are classified depending upon the space availability of the space and the size of the bearing so here here l can l is the length of the bearing and d is the diameter of the bearing if the ratio of the if the ratio of the length of the bearing length of the bearing to the diameter of the journal diameter of the journal is called uh, is called l by d ratio okay uh, depending upon the size and uh, availability of space bearings uh, classified as short bearings long bearings and square bearings here l is the length of the bearing d is the diameter of the shaft diameter of the shaft or diameter of the journal okay when when the l by d ratio is less than 1 then the bearing is uh, said to be short bearing okay when the ratio of l by d ratio is less than 1 then the bearing is said to be short bearing similarly if uh, l by d ratio is greater than 1 then the bearing is known as long bearing as well as uh, if uh, l by d ratio is equal to 1 then the bearing is known as square bearing okay i will explain with example here this is a bearing okay this is the length of the bearing this is a capital l is the length of the bearing capital l or small l whatever it may be this is the length length of the bearing okay now here this is the diameter inner diameter of a bearing equal to diameter of a shaft okay here the diameter of a shaft equal to inner diameter of a bearing so this is the diameter of a journal or diameter of a moving element so the ratio of uh, l by d is less than one then the bearing is said to be short bearing so here the value of length length of the bearing is always less than the diameter of the shaft okay in short bearings the length of the bearing is less than the diameter of the shaft okay d is the diameter of the shaft okay in short bearings length less than the diameter okay length of the bearing less than the diameter of the shaft similarly in this case this is the length of the bearing okay this is the length of the bearing this is the diameter of the journal diameter of the journal or diameter of the inner diameter of the bearing here here the length is greater than the diameter okay so this type of bearing is called long bearing in long bearings the length the length of the bearing is greater than the diameter of the shaft okay so these, these bearings are called long bearings 
similarly in this uh, in this type here the length here the length is equal to diameter of the shaft okay length of the bearing equal to diameter of the shaft in this case if the length is equal to diameter then this type of bearings are called square bearings okay so i will repeat again if uh, if length is less than the diameter then the type of bearing is called short bearing if the length is greater than the diameter then the bearing is called long bearing okay if the length of the bearing equal to diameter of the bearing then the bearing is called square bearing okay now coming to the another topic that is the types of sliding contact sliding contact or journal or sleeve bearings okay in previous slide already we have discussed about uh, uh, type of bearings okay in that topic already we have discussed about the sliding bearings sliding contact bearings okay in sliding contact bearings uh, in which the sliding action is guided in a straight line and carrying radial loads as shown in figure okay may be called slipper or guide bearings okay such type of bearings are usually found in the cross head of steam engines okay these are the examples for uh, journal bearings or sleeve bearings here this is a uh, one type of uh, journal bearing that is a full journal bearing this is a partial journal bearing this is a fitted journal bearing okay here this is the a shaft this is a shaft this outer outside uh, surface is called uh, fixed fixed uh, body that is a bearing okay fixed surface or a bearing this inside a rolling body is called shaft okay this is a shaft this is a bearing here there is a clearance between the shaft and bearing okay for providing the lubrication lubricants okay here here also this is a bearing this is a shaft okay here also this is a bearing this is a shaft uh, here in partial general bearings there is no uh, sorry here we are also providing lubricant in partial general bearings we are also providing lubricant between the shaft and bearing but the size of the bearing is 120 degrees okay here in fitted journal bearings there is no clearance between the shaft and bearing in in full journal bearing and uh, partial journal bearing uh, we are providing clearance clearance between shaft and bearing but in fitted journal bearing we don't provide any clearance any gap between a shaft and bearing okay that's why it is called fitted journal bearing okay okay when the angle of contact of the bearing with the journal is 360 degrees that is a complete round as shown in figure a then the bearing is called full journal bearing okay here the angle of uh, bearing is 360 degrees that is one complete revolution okay this type of bearing is commonly used in uh, industrial machineries to accommodate uh, bearing loads in any radial directions okay now uh, when the angle of contact of the bearing when the angle of contact of the bearing with the journal is 120 degrees okay then the bearing is said to be partial journal bearing this type of bearing has uh, less friction less friction than uh, full journal bearing but it can be used only where the load is always in one direction okay 
the most common application of uh, this partial general bearing is found in railroad car axles okay the full and partial general bearings may be called as clearance bearings okay because the diameter of the journal is uh, less than the less than that of the size of the bearing okay yeah the size of the bearing is more than the size of the shaft in full journal bearings and uh, partial journal bearings uh, when a partial journal bearing has no clearance there is uh, the diameter of the journal and uh, the size of the bearing are equal then the bearing is called fitted bearing okay in fitted bearing the size of the shaft uh, that means the diameter of the shaft equal to diameter of the bearing okay there is no clearance between the shaft and bearing so then the bearing is called fitted bearing okay okay friends uh, tomorrow i will explain about uh, some basic terms used in uh, journal bearings okay